Um, hi, uh, my name is Rubana Liss John. I'm the director and editor of the feature documentary film Ladies Only. Uh, the film is set in the ladies' compartments of the local trains in Mumbai and um, where cha chance encounters and acquaintances are invited to reveal uh, their ambitions and their dreams. And um, uh, I ask them some particularly interesting questions. Hi, welcome to the Teddy TV. My name is Jombor Bobak, and this time we are discussing the film Ladies Only. Hi, Rebana. Welcome to the Teddy. Welcome to the festival. Um, tell me, what was your main objective when you started working on this film? Uh, well, uh, the main objective is kind of hard to um, boil it down to one objective, but I suppose I was kind of uh, very touched by the way things were going at that moment with uh, the Me Too movement. Um, there was there was so many news uh, uh, articles that I was reading that was about um, oppression towards women or violence and so on and so forth. And um, it it that was what was moving me at that moment. And um, I think uh, when I discovered this picture of the ladies' compartment that I had taken about ten years ago. It, um, it just started materializing the idea that um, here is a film. And then I went to check it out and I did the research and I did the, the recce trip to see what happens if I put a camera in the, in the ladies compartment and see what that, uh, what that does. And um, I suppose it was an exploration in that sense, also of narrative, also of um, uh, what it means to be a woman in uh, Mumbai city, 
or what it means to be a woman in, at all. Um, and, uh, um, and also, yeah, um, I, I think that's about, about it for now. Sorry, I, I think I need some, a bit of time to uh, get into the flow. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, don't worry about it. Um, yes, so as you said, the film takes place in the in the female compartment of of uh, trains in in Mumbai. Um, how did you? How how was it for you to to get in touch with these women? Because I imagine that most of these were random encounters, people that you just encountered on the train. Um, how was it to get these women to? speak to you and tell their stories on camera? Um, the original idea was to what was that we were going to interact with people on this kind of level of this uh, on a uh, with the with the sort of connection that you can build on a train, which is very fleeting, yeah. very quick. Um, at the same time, I knew that it, it is uh, I, I don't know what it is kind of like a gamble, right? I don't know if I'll get mm -hmm. anybody to speak or what will I get? And so uh, I had some people, a few people I had invited as well said, okay, you join me in the train and let's have a conversation. Uh, they weren't necessarily people I knew that well. So they were also uh, strangers in a way, Yeah. but there were some surefire people. And then there were the people who I met, uh, who we met um, by chance. And uh, um, we sort of got into the habit, the habit of approaching people who seemed a bit open, who seemed interested and would want mm -hmm. to have a conversation with us. And uh, um, sometimes we just started asking questions. Uh, like we said, is it okay for you if you film you Not, yeah. and so on, explaining the project. And um, sometimes I would just ask them to read the poem that uh, I had, which is the poems from Kamla Basin, which, is, which are these really beautiful, simple language, but holding so much meaning kind of poems. Mm -hmm. And they're in uh, they're in Hindi as well, so uh, it's a different kind of access, uh, I thought as well. And uh, so when they read this poem, I think it it impresses them in a certain way. It inspires yeah. them to talk about things that I have no control over in a way, which is kind of <laughs> what I enjoyed about it as well. Like with the poem came answers of varied kinds, and yeah. which was also a surprise for me while yeah. I was. Um, like uh, it was sort of like an experiment to see what happens, what comes out of the, the women when I give them this poem. And then, of course, I had the qu uh, certain kinds of questions that mm -hmm. also were something that uh, I, I don't think they were used to those kind of questions, um, yeah. especially not in um, the, the ladies compartment of yeah. the trains on a daily uh, commute. Yeah, one of these questions uh, that 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 come back is um, what makes you angry. This is a recurring question in the film. Um, did you have other questions that were recurring that that you liked to ask um, these women? And I mean, from the film, obviously, it it comes out from from their responses. What makes them angry? But did you have something that you could identify as an overarching? theme as within their responses? Um, I think in one way, it's about uh, how they manage, how they deal with the circumstances and sort of uh, accept it. And which is where the question of anger came from, because I felt like, um, I mean, you live in a patriarchal society and it's bound to make you angry. Whether mm -hmm. you call yourself a feminist or not, I think it still makes you angry. And it still affects you, even as a man, I think, or even as mm -hmm. many uh, people on, on the varied spectrum, it affects you. And then um, when people are so able to accept it and be so uh, willing to accept it, I wondered what happens to the anger. And so that's uh, where I was approaching it from. Uh, I was also asking questions like, when was the last time you cried, for example, mm -hmm. or... Um, what uh, what are you afraid of and so on which um like i was looking for a more honest emotional picture of these women yeah so yeah. that's what i was uh, going for mm -hmm. i see um can you tell us about your artistic approach towards it it was very it was shot in these very beautiful black and white images why did you decide on that um, and also the the technical properties of the work. Uh, what considerations did you take? 
Uh, so with the black and white decision, it was fairly clear even during the recce of the film because uh, as soon as I, I got my camera out and I was looking at everything, um, you see that everything is changing. There's constant light changes. There's so mm -hmm. many people coming in. There's a lot of chaos. There's uh, a lot going on at the same time. And um, and then the black and white just sort of distilled all of that down into a sort of essence of the space. There, there was something about it kind of centering mm -hmm. the, the whole atmosphere, uh, which I liked and also Considering uh, I, I was also, the film was also funded by the NRW Stiftung, Film and Me Media Stiftung NRW, mm -hmm. and uh, also produced in Germany. Um, so I, I felt like I was carrying a certain gaze with me, which I yeah. wanted to somehow like uh, shift it a bit, which is to uh, change this kind of, th there's always this exotic gaze on India as a super colorful place and, um, I wanted to change that slightly and like shift that mm -hmm. a little bit and say, okay, no, let's make it black and white. And then, then you maybe focus on the, the fo focus on what it is actually, and not kind of get distracted by the color. Yeah. At least that was what I was uh, intending in a way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And also like these, like, um, it seemed very interesting because um, you, it seemed that in order for you to to focus on 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 these women, you really had to get close to them. We have like some of these wider images where the background is not completely accentuated. Can you tell us about uh, what was the technical aspect behind this? Uh, so the whole film was shot only with prime lenses, which mm -hmm. means we used only lenses of a certain. Uh, so if you wanted to. Uh, get closer then you have to physically get closer, closer yeah. to the person um, and for me that that was a way to maybe bring a bit more honesty into the whole thing um, because it's a ladies compartment it's a lot of people moving in and out we can't uh, we can't always tell people what's going on but yeah. at the same time so if you have a zoom lens you could kind of sit far away and get someone who is a bit unawares but if you uh, have to get closer to them um, then they see you and um, and that was one of my directives to my camera person as well that she should make eye contact with the people she's filming mm. so that they are not complete they're not unaware of the camera they have to be able to know that they're being filmed and then they can give consent without it being a yes here let's like, take my signature but it's more like a yes I accept and yeah. if they don't accept then don't film so uh, I think the, the prime lensing was uh, was a method to achieve that kind of mm -hmm. consent and also, yeah, and also I think um, aesthetically it, it creates a whole other um, visual look, um, which I think when you have a zoom lens, then there's al always this tendency to want to readjust the frame and then kind of go in closer, go in further yeah. away and kind of wanted to take that out. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. It might also come from the fact that I've, um, I mean, ever since I have uh, had a camera, I've always had a 50mm lens and I've never had any other lenses that I've used mm. personally. And I think there's a certain discipline that that brings to your craft, uh, to the way you look at things mm. that I also wanted to bring into the, into this yeah. film. Yeah, and it also nicely, as, as you also touched upon it, it nicely breaks with this voyeuristic element that often mm -hmm. zooming can can produce um it's the film had a very um a very particular rhythm to it which i thought was very nicely aligning with this typical like rhythm of the train moving mm -hmm. um can you tell us about about this aspect of the film um well it was kind of hard to figure out how to build this narrative because mm -hmm. it's so open in a way there's so many possibilities of how you can make a film about yeah. something like this and i can imagine five different films coming out of the same material we had 75 hours of material in total mm. and um uh, i think in the beginning i started it with uh, it being much longer shots much more um like um, I'm, I'm a fan of slow cinema and so I felt like that's what I wanted yeah. this kind of um, ease and just spending time on um, just watching and observing 
Um, but as the rough cuts kind of get caught, uh, kept getting worked on, um, I realized that there, there is a rhythm that it needed. And just as I was polishing it slowly, slowly, that rhythm kind of came into the, mm. um, into the foreground. And um, mm. yeah, and then some parts I just went very obviously into the rhythm because yeah. uh, um, that's also what, like you said, the, the train inspires that. Yeah. So why should it not reflect that aspect? Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. Um, the, the, the other thing that came to my mind while I was watching it, that it was, of course, very interesting to hear all these different stories uh, from, from, the, from the women that you, that you talk to. Um, but then through their stories and through everything that we see and everything that they discuss, it not only becomes sort of a portrait of them and of femininity and, and being a female, but it also becomes a portrait of this city of Mumbai through a very particular female lens. Mm -hmm. What was your take on this? Um, well, for, um, I mean, for starters, I think we live in a world that is very, uh, very skewed in that sense of that it is a very uh, strongly male gaze that has mm. dominated, that's sort of built everything, even in, yeah. in even in women's own heads. Like we have, uh, we have all adopted that as neutral, and uh, it's it's a long process to try to dismantle that and try to look at what that means to look right. at it from a female perspective, or I wouldn't even say female perspective, I would say a feminist perspective, which mm. is then to say is, it isn't just about looking at it through a female gaze, because one can also dismantle that and say, what is a female gaze at the end of the day? I mean, it, it gets, it's quite a complicated little uh, yeah. whirlpool there to look at um, all of this, but uh, looking at it through a feminist lens means then we identify power structures within uh, women themselves within so it's it's a very complicated space and um, I, th I thought there was something about uh, locating myself inside that compartment which is meant only for women mm. um, but it also allows for example young boys to be there or it also allows um, uh, sort of people who beg for money to come who are whatever gender yeah. Um, it allows for trans women to enter. So uh, it's an interesting space in that sense of how it is permissive of who yeah. can enter in a way. Um, but at the same time, it's a ladies compartment. So yeah. it had already those uh, complexities um, within it. And I, th I thought that's a good space to explore. Yeah, it was very intriguing for me. Uh, and, and this like departs a bit from from your particular work, but we had um, this year in the selection an other film in another section of the festival uh, that was dealing with student protests um, in India, and they discuss um, um, the particular issues um, that um, non-binary and transgender people face um, in that. And there was one story uh, told there where one of these non-binary characters talks about how they don't find their place on the train because they are not welcome in the ladies compartment because they don't necessarily read as female but then mm -hmm. they don't want to be in the male's compartment because they don't feel that way and so they they are in this constant limbo and sometimes they what they tried as is kind of tricking the system is to sit in between the two. Um, and in your film as well, we sometimes see trans women pass um, in, the, in, the, in the frame. I was wondering what was your impression while being there, being present in that space, um, encountering these, these people, what was your impression? How do trans women or non-binary people fit into this space of the ladies compartment uh i mean uh, i'm just trying to think about that because i think uh, in these local trains for example in mumbai we mm. have ladies compartments and we have general compartments so that means mm. even women can go to the other compartments and anyone can basically go to the other yeah. compartments 
the ladies' compartments is yeah, just sort of for the women. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's an interesting thought, I guess. I haven't um, engaged with it so much uh, as to where um, non-binary people would find themselves. Um, uh, I guess I, I, I don't know if we are at the stage where those kind of conversations are even really that visible. I think yeah. the ideas of non-binary and all of that is pretty new for uh, like a large part of the population here. Um, but I mean, I, I would imagine that there is space for them in, in, in the ladies' compartment. I, I don't think, um, I mean, I, um, I, I don't know how to talk about it because I haven't yeah. really spoken to um, anyone who identifies strongly as mm -hmm. non-binary in this context. I wish yeah. I had. I had even contemplated, for example, um, asking a friend uh, not contemplated i had asked him if he would join who, if he would like to come uh, as one of the invitees to the train yeah. because he um he has a whole uh, i mean he he dresses in drag and it's a it's also a performance that he does and um he i don't know if he identifies as a woman but at the same time uh he does because of how he wants to be seen in a in a certain parts of his life um, but in the end it didn't work out and yeah. I'm not sure how that would have worked like um, someone yeah. who is cis man who dresses in drag entering the woman's compartment how comfortable would the women themselves feel there yeah. and then so on and of course that's uh, also a complicated discussion because there, there are feminists now who don't seem to be able to recognize trans women and right. so on and um, yeah, I don't know if I've answered your question, yeah. but you, you did. You you certainly did because obviously it's it's just up to your impressions being present in that space. Because while yeah. making the film, obviously it's it's not just making a film, but being being there and and, and being present. Um, so yeah, you fully answered the question. Um, I think what a lot of people might wonder uh, watching the film, and what definitely came to my mind was the editing process behind it. You said that it was quite an immense amount of footage that that you finished um, the, the shooting process with. Um, and then to go through that and and come up with a with a compact and kind of round narrative, I imagine that must have been a challenge. Oh, yeah. Uh... <laughs> So, I mean, uh, for, for one, it was a, a large amount of material, um, which I, I actually transcribed everything. I worked uh, not just the interviews, but also the images. I sort of wrote it down mm -hmm. as text. And uh, that took quite a, a few months uh, to finish mm -hmm. doing everything. And then that was my second, I mean, that was my actual um, sort of edit. Like that was my uh, way of getting to know the material really well and then to go through the text i found myself imagining things and remembering them well and I, that's how i knew that yeah this this has something that mm -hmm. this has some emotional weight or or uh, some kind of weight that is drawing itself to the narrative and then um it landed itself on many different um uh, categories of uh, timelines and so on and um yeah i mean i think i was editing in a very kind of like working with different threads, I created a, a different timelines that worked like threads. And then I was yeah. sort of knitting them together and um, creating this base. And this was also done during the lockdown, mm -hmm. um, lockdowns of the pandemic. So uh, it was an, an even more intense experience. Yeah. Um, in a way, it was very anchoring because um, in the middle of this raging pandemic, I was sitting with these women in the train and like working with the rhythms of that train. Um, yeah, and I think uh, my objective was to find my way through those threads, like, and I think somehow, uh, yeah, working with a more intuitive process to figure out what color thread goes where. And, um, and then of course, there were so many other layers that I was working with in terms of uh, 
like in terms of gender, in terms of class, in terms of um, the, the diversity of stories, in terms of class, and, and then there's also the layer of caste. I mean, it's, it's such yeah. a complex space that I was trying to approach uh, with so much diversity that um, it took a lot of effort to try to distill it down into that 18 minute piece yeah. in the end. Yeah, this intersectionality was was certainly very powerful and and intriguing to watch, particularly regarding issues of class um, and how that that is so inextricably linked with struggles of of gender uh, and gender expression. Can you mm -hmm. explain a bit about this? Can you elaborate a bit on 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 this? What you've seen. Uh I mean, uh, I suppose it's quite obvious to us now that when there is a certain amount of privilege, there is also a certain um, freedom of thought and expression. And um, I think if you have that privilege, then uh, it's, it is easier to live as a woman, to live mm -hmm. as a queer person, um, and to live as, uh, yeah, well, that covers everything, I suppose. But, um, Mm. It, it, I mean, it is a complex space because I mean, I think as soon as I get into that uh, into that discussion, um, I, I I get lost actually because yeah. uh, um, one can like one can fight for women's rights, but if you do not uh, consider the caste element, the class element, um, the race element, then uh, it can very quickly become about very privileged. Um, yeah people mm. and uh and at the same time it, it is complicated like a brown man and a white woman or a um a, a brown woman and uh, someone from another caste who's uh, um i mean the yeah. combinations are endless and yeah. uh, one can't simplify it down to just it being about gender or it being about this or that right yeah great rebana thank you very much uh, for talking to us. Um, thank you also for, for this very intriguing film, Ladies Only. Um, yeah, I wish you all the best for the Berlinale. Well, thank, thank you. you.